So we're going to be here uh, on chapter 14, we're in the last part of the book, talking about the meal of the message, you know, the, 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 the nitty gritty of communication itself. I mean, last week we, 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 we shared on the, on the uh, recipe, right? Uh, the instruction of how to put the different ingredients together, right? Today we're going to be talking about the ingredient itself that makes up the message itself. Right, the, the, the meat of it all, as it were. So, and this is a quote by T.D. Jakes. You know, as you will note, you know, this particular part is written by Dr. Frank Thomas, right, who's uh, a seminarian, uh, a doctor, PhD in doing this. So, uh, we're, we're, we're having an expert talk to us about communication, but pretty much from using uh, T.D. Jakes as a subject matter, uh, as, a, as a case study, as it were. You know, T.D. Jakes has this quote, talks about the ingredients of a good sermon and the word sermon there represents communication. So it could be any, any kind of communication you might have, but it says an ingredient, or I'll use the word the essential ingredient, where I come from what the recipe requires, as well as what you decide to add or subtract. You know, and, and, you know the, the recipe itself is what you might call uh, the guideline, right? That, uh, and that's for amateurs. Amateurs have to stick by the recipe, right? Because you're not gaining enough mastery to begin to tweak things around. But as you gain mastery, you can then begin to add or subtract to get different flavors of the same meal you're trying to, you're trying to, to prepare. But the first step is you have to get to know the recipe and, and understand the recipe after you've understood it you can then begin to tweak it around to get different flavors, to meet different audience, uh, different uh, age group, you know, tradition, culture, as they might be according to the, 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 the message or the audience or, or what you're trying to communicate, right? That the essential ingredient, right, is what the recipe recommends. Another way of saying that is, you know, in communication, we have the science, and we have the heart of communication. The science of communication tells you about the boundaries, tells you about the, it's a recipe. They, it tells you about how you should put the different parts together. The, what, you, what we call the science of communication really is what you might call the recipe of communication, right? It defines for us what communication is and how it should be done for different group sets uh, in different areas, different places, right? But there is more to it. Right, you, a person now can own his own communication by what we we'll call the heart, right? The A R T of communication that comes from the heart is what your heart puts onto the science that gives you what you call the heart of communication. And that becomes your own brand, your own taste, your own uniqueness, or your unique way of communicating, as it were. Right? So, you know, again, there are four parts in which we communicate or we do anything in the slide. Right, we have what we do with our hands, uh, what we do with our head, what we do with our heart, and what we do with our guts. Right, uh, typically the, the ordinary level, right, that that uniforms and and, and 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 carries all of us together is where you where you say what you do with your hands, right, and that's pretty much talking about the science of communication. There we can all learn, we can all have commonality, as it were as to how to communicate, how to pass a message across, right? But there, there are those that, name, that can differentiate themselves from a general grouping, but not just using their hands, but bringing their heart, right? Bringing their, their, their right now, before the heart is bringing their head, as it were, into the communication, right? You're, you're bringing your head into the communication. You're not just doing it as, um, as a gifting or as a as a talent, but you are beginning to exercise yourself in terms of knowing more, or become more skillful, as it were, in communication. So you go to another level than the level that is what we might call the um, the native way of communicating, right? What you are born with, right? Or native knowledge, right? Or, or native wisdom. Uh, but then you 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 get to uh, what you might call the science, really, because then you begin to study into how to communicate, right? So you have your hand, your, your, your head, 
And there is now the place that comes about using your heart, right, to communicate. You know, that's when you talk about creativity. Your heart brings creativity to bear. Your heart brings innovation to bear. Your, your heart brings its own quarter, its own niche in communication to bear because you begin to allow your imagination, your creativity to affect the way you communicate, right? So you, it takes you to another level altogether in communication. And there's also the gods, right? The gods is you now being able to break boundaries, either to establish boundaries. You begin to try things that, or go places that people have not gone through before, right? And all of this are just different ways of communicating, right? And, and it comes by practice. You're only going to get good at communicating by doing it. You see, I'm, I'm a much better person today because I get to do this. The more I do it, the more I, I find new boundaries. I, I push back. And I get better at doing it, right? I get better at doing it because I do it, right? And, and that's just the whole easy, easy, easy thing about it. When it comes to communication, it's wanting to read about it, and 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 that will not get you to a place of uh, 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 uniqueness or, or having a niche or, or or being able to um, have a, a brand that can be celebrated or that is marketable, right? You have to. Do it to know how to do it. You have to do it to specialize at it. You have to do it to, to find your own niche. You have to do it to, to make it marketable, attractive, and desirable. Right? All right, let's go on. And uh, so uh, pretty much talking about here about ingredient, it is talking about the fact that uh, some of these are native to us, more like some of the things we already said. And some of this come as per we bring in our creativity, innovation to that, right? Uh, to, to move to new, um, new either to on, um, on, 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 on uh, explored um, frontiers, as it were, you know? So and when we talk about the ingredients, that those that we inherit as a result of where we are born, the tradition, the place we find ourselves, the way we do things, Right, but we don't have to die there. We can evolve. We can, we can, we can extend the boundaries. We can push the boundaries and get better at the way we do it. We can move the whole culture forward. And you know, we are born here to to leave our mark in this life. That's the whole essence of being a being a human being. Right, God did not born us here to be to to play the follow the followers game. Right, which is easy. Right, like everybody's doing. The, uh, uh, uh. I mean, the, there's something inside each of us that we're brought into this life to, to make our own mark in this life, to, to make our, our being here memorable, to, to immortalize our name, our passage through this life, that people will remember us forever. We're each here to leave our own debt, debt in this life, right? And that's going to come by allowing your own uniqueness to flow out. By gifting the world, which you what what is inside of you, right? And like we we'll say again, you know, you got to know how to do what is what is to be able to bring about the more, right? You have first of all be comfortable with what is, understand it before you begin to explore the boundaries, right? Uh, and, and just to speak a bit more on that, you know. It, 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 um, Dr. Frank Thomas, who's writing sermons are developed out of raw materials or ingredients of a tradition. You know, and, and really, if, if you're going to communicate to a particular set group, uh, you, you have to understand their culture. You have to understand the way they communicate. Otherwise, you're just going to be speaking Latin and nobody's going to understand what you're saying, right? If, if, if there's a particular set, segment you want to speak to, you need to understand them enough to be able to reach them. Because uh, it might be the same English you speak it, but the way of speaking it might be different. Interpretation of words might be different. Intonation might be different. Pitch might be different. And there might be different understandings that come from those differences, right? Don't forget again, a very small percentage of our communication is by words, right? People are reading meaning to what we're saying, but what they are seeing, not necessarily what they're hearing. And what they're seeing influences what they hear. But what they're seeing can change entire words that they are hearing just because of the, the, what they are seeing 
the way I'm moving my hand, it, it's a communication that overrides even the words that I'm saying. So if there's no harmony between what, the way I'm gesticulating and the, what the words I'm saying, I might be communicating something other than what I want to communicate to the person that's hearing me. The person that's hearing me might be hearing something entirely different from what my intent is. And therefore communication has not taken place, right? So, you know, I need to understand the tradition, uh, the, the culture of the people I'm, I'm trying to talk to, right? So that all that I'm doing, my words, my gesticulation can achieve, be in harmony to pass the message, the intended message across to the person I'm saying it to. So, and that's what uh, Dr. Frank Thomas was saying here. There's a need to understand the tradition, the culture of the people. And that has come from where their roots, the history, all of that. I need to be able to find my way in there, in there. But if I'm going to take them to somewhere else, I have to start from the known to take them to the unknown. The only way you're going to take people to a known is first of all, they have to accept you. And the only way they can accept you is in the place of the known. They have, they have to see you as one of them to be able to follow you to where you want to take them to. Don't forget leadership is the gift that is given to the, to the, to the leader by the followership. It's not something you take by force. So when I'm communicating for people to follow me to the land that I'm trying to take them to by, by, my, by the reason of my communication, I have to sell myself to them enough for them to be able to willingly, willingly go along with me. Right. So, and that's all, all about communication, right? Just you have to meet people where they are. They don't have to come to where you are. That's not the first place. You have to come to where, go to where they are. Then you can take them to where it is that you are or wherever you want to go to. People have to accept you and be willing to follow you for you to have communication, you know, otherwise you're, you're, you're speaking Latin. Right. And here just goes on and, and, you know, just talks about the fact that just exactly what we've been talking about. You have to get to know the tradition, accept it, all right, and people accept you. Then you can take them you then to wherever it is that you want to take them to for as long, for as, long as they receive your person, right? And here just talking about having done all of that, there's a need to align the assets that you, you, you have as a communicator or preacher or teacher or yeah, or wherever you find yourself, right? You know, and, and that affects the way you create the message, right? Uh, and I love the way, the way Dr. Frank uh, Thomas, you know, kind of um, explained or, or used the um, analogy or allegory of uh, communication communication with music, I love music, right? I'm an artist at heart. I love creating things, I love being innovative. You know, I love creativity, right? And I'm not gonna be in a place where there's no, someone is not putting their heart to the work, you know? And everyone that works for me knows that, knows I don't do things the way everybody does it. Oh, let's try to do, tweak something around. I, I love beauty, I love applying my heart and my heart to whatever it is that I do. So the same thing goes here with communication, right? It's it just like a music, right? And I love music, right? I listen, I listen to all kinds of music, right? And uh, some of you listen to just the music, just the, just the music, right? I couldn't bother about the words, the music, because I'm a musician at heart, right? And, and yeah, the words, there are times I, I do it with the words also, you know, but music can get me where the words are not necessarily right, and I'm all about the music, right? But the same thing with communication, right? I can have all the things that I want to communicate and I'm not being able to do it in a melodious or, or, or in a musical fashion such that the people are not receiving it, right? I have the words, the message to pass across, but everything is disjointed, right? It's like noise, right? So that even though I have the message, you cannot receive it because it's not coming in a, in a reading, in the right reading of vibration that suited for them to embrace it, right? So I have a message. I need to be able to communicate it in such a way that people can be, be relaxed enough to listen to the words, listen to the message, listen to that which I'm trying to pass across, right? I should not be uh, 
just jumping all around and, and, and creating noise, right? Communication, it's something that follows a particular rhythm. And typically it's a rhythm that, that, that finds a, a, a resonance with the reading of the, of the audience that, you're list, that are listening to you. Because don't forget, communication is a two-way thing, right? So they have to be able to hear what I'm saying and reply, and I reply, and all of them have to be in some kind of uh, resonance, reading, right? Even though they're not talking, but from all their expressions, they're laughing, their gesticulation, you're, you're, you're receiving something, you're, you're receiving whether your message is being taken, not taken, accepted, not accepted, are they open to it? And, and all of that's taking place in the mind of the communicator, right? Even though I'm talking right now, I'm listening to all the vibes coming in. Even though I'm not seeing anybody, but I can almost, I can sense the vibes coming back to me. And, and that affects the way I talk, right? Because of the continuous communication process, right? It, it, and that's just a life of a communicator, right? As you get as you get expertise in, in communicating, you get to understand how to get, listen to your audience and, and get that reading going. Right, because we are not in that rhythm, your message will not get home as it's supposed to get. Get in, in pretty much that. That's that's just that. And just to emphasize that, you know, the communication is not just about words, like I said before, it's the whole of your body, right? It's the way you speak, your intonation. You know, I know what, the way I speak, her, and some people just want to hear me talk, not necessarily because of what I'm saying, but because of the way I'm saying it. Right, and that's important, right? That's important, but it's, 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 it's one, it's good. I just have to get them to go beyond just hearing the way I talk, right? You know, it's one thing that I can get their attention. In essence, it's for me to use that attention to get the message through, right? But the whole of your being, it, it, it's communicating. So you have to hold what you have and know how to use it to get your, your message across. Right, and that's all I'm talking about aligning your asset. Your asset is everything about you, your life, your person, your, your body, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you gesticulate. All of that, it goes into, into, in, into the message and makes a difference as to what the person is hearing and not hearing, right? And, um, and here it still talks about the fact owning what you have, owning your asset. Owning what you have and what you don't have also, right? Because, uh, I mean, I don't talk like some people. I don't have that, right? I'm not going to try to be what I'm not, right? You have to be authentic, legitimate by honing you and using you to get your message across, right? You don't have to be anybody. Whatever you have is enough. Whatever you don't have, you don't need, right? And that's important, right? And, and yeah, just talks about the clothes, right? As a pretty much, um, and people come to the clothes from different angles, depending on the way you're talking, uh, uh, your your audience, and all that. And, and, but the, the the clothes is pretty much just getting our last one chain, making sure that. Uh, Whatever it is you're communicating is not lost in all the uh, other gesticulations or examples or whatever else you've done. You need to make sure if there's a point that you want to get across, you need to hammer it in. You need to make sure it's not lost in all the other things that you have said, in the examples or stories. Just make sure that you, you drive your point home. So it might just be a summary. You know, this will differ depending on the audience you're, you're speaking to. It could be a, some kind of summary whatever, but the whole intent is to make sure that the, the core of your message is not, is not missed by the people you're trying to, uh, you're communicating with. They don't run over with something else other than what it is you intended in your communication. Like Jim Rohn would say, the essence of communication is action, right? So you have to ensure that they get the action that is required by, by a reason of your communication. Right, so depending on the audience you have, you, you can do this in different ways. But all you're trying to achieve is to ensure that the action you're looking for is what you get, is, is what you get, right? Pretty much. And that's the, really the close 